What's going on guys? This is Mike and Roy, and today we are going to talk about Skylander Spyro's Adventure. But wait, we already talked about Spyro's Adventure, haven't we? Oh no, I'm not talking about the console versions. I'm talking about the infamous 3DS version. So I recognize that we could talk a lot more about the 3DS versions of Skylanders than we did before and surprisingly, not a lot of people play these versions. And y'all call yourself Skylander fans. Shame on you. So for my non 3DS owners out there and those who haven't played the games in a while, I'll be looking back at all the five 3DS Skylander games. And of course, we are starting with Skylander Spyro's Adventure. The Nintendo 3DS was a handheld console, the successor to Nintendo's most popular gaming device of all time, the Nintendo DS, which had a pretty impressive nine year lifespan, releasing in 2011 and discontinued in 2020. The handheld had a pretty rough start. It was priced at $250 and had an underwhelming list of launch titles. I mean, Street Fighters 4 3D was pretty good and I'm sure people were excited to play another Pilot Wings game, but no big first party titles like Mario or Zelda could justify a day one purchase. Plus, the 3D functionality didn't quite hit the mark. I mean, the 3D feature is hot garbage on the first 3DS and 3DS XL. It wasn't until Nintendo dropped the price of the system to $150 and started releasing titles like Super Mario 3D Land and Mario Kart 7 for the system to finally sell. One of the games that was released in the first year of the 3DS was none other than the first Skylander game, Spyro's Adventure. If you compare the 3DS starter pack with the console or PC versions, you'll notice a few differences. The 3DS starter pack is in a vertical box while the regular starter packs are in a horizontal box. Oh, and the 3DS starter pack has a smaller portal and different set of Skylanders. I, I guess there's that. The three Skylanders included in the 3DS starter pack are Igniter, Stealth Elf, and Dark Spyro. Igniter and Stealth Elf were both available in single packs and their respective triple packs, but Dark Spyro was exclusive to the 3DS starter pack. You see, the 3DS is not as powerful as consoles, so it wouldn't be able to run the standard Spyro's adventure game. So the 3DS version was an entirely different gameplay experience with a different story. So the idea was that the 3DS version was meant as a new way to play Skylanders. So for those who already own the console versions, you weren't going to get duplicates of Spyro, Gilgra, and Trigger Happy. But of course the game is still called Spyro's Adventure, so they included a variation of Spyro. Of course you get your stat cards, your stickers, your codes, and your poster which includes a spot for Dark Spyro. And then you get your tiny portal of power. A normal portal of power connects into the console, but the 3DS portal connects wirelessly using the infrared port and three AAA batteries to power it up. Using the portal is pretty easy. When the game prompts you to scan a figure, you press the top of the portal to power it on and line up the 3DS with the portal. You just hold the 3DS steady until your Skylander is fully scanned into the game. When you finish, you can either let it turn off itself or hold the top to manually turn it off. The portal only lights up blue instead of multiple colors like the console versions, so you don't get much of a light show. Other portals that use this port are the Disney Infinity Portal and the Amiibo NFC Reader. In the starter pack, you also get a mini USB cable to connect the portal into a PC and play Skylanders Universe, which we can't do anymore because Skylanders Universe shut down a long time ago. But now that we got our figures and portal, let's Let's play the game. Ooh, that jingle though. The story of the game is completely different from the console versions. In fact, you can assume that it takes place after the console version since Eon is a floating head. The game takes place in the Radiant Isles, home of the Mystic Seekers, which are pretty much wizard Mabus. They are raided by a giant floating head, no, not Eon. Hector, who forces the Seekers to build the dark mirror that hides the Radiant Isles to keep the power for himself. So with Fargus's help, oh, oh, wait, he just got captured. With Windows help, you can explore the Radiant Isles to find crystals and find the Seekers to build the Shattering Sigil, which will destroy the Dark Mirror and stop Hector. You start the first level by summoning your first Skylander to find the first crystal. And this is where you discover the biggest difference with the two versions of Spyro's Adventure. This game is an action platformer. You go around beating up baddies with your primary and secondary attacks, all while trying to reach the end end of the level by jumping to each platform. Wait, did I say jumping? Hold on, that, hold on, that's gotta be a mistake. 
What I actually meant was double jumping. Yes, sir! Skylanders no longer require jump pads to reach higher terrains. All you need is the B button. Some Skylanders can even glide and hover by holding the B button, making some characters easy to avoid falling and receiving fall damage. Jumping is cool and all, but if only my Skylanders can sprint? All Skylanders can sprint with the A or L button, which is important to use in this game for reasons we'll talk about later. For some Skylanders, sprinting acts as a third attack, like Spyro's Ram Attack and Sunburn's Phoenix Dash. After finishing the first level, you are introduced to the Sanctuary where you can summon a second Skylander. This isn't optional, you need at least two Skylanders to play this game, just letting you know. You can switch between two Skylanders by simply using the touchscreen, and if you want to use another Skylander, you can talk to Wendell and he will replace the Skylander you talk to him with. Your Skylander's level basically saves in the game, so if you want to transfer your progress to your Skylander itself, all you have to do is scan them in the game again, and your Skylander's level will show up in the console versions. If you try putting in a duplicate Skylander in the game, it will ask you to replace the character data with the one you're trying to scan in. And if you want to reset your Skylanders, you can't. There's no function to do that. Which is funny to think that Skylanders from its own game can't reset, but you can reset creation crystals from Imaginators. Like what the hell? Oh, also you can scan in one of the Spyro's adventure sidekicks and have them follow you around in the sanctuary, which is pretty cool. The sanctuary is not the most exciting hub out there, but it's straightforward. You have Wendell who summons your Skylanders. You can check your Skylander and hat collection and travel to all the levels. The hub has slight updates when you complete levels so that there's a little bit of progression in the hub there's a total of 34 levels in spiral's adventure you got your 25 story levels one boss fight level and eight levels part of the four adventure packs the 25 story levels takes place in five areas which each have five levels bright hold battlements riven rock caverns white fall summits fey lair jungle and gale crack ruins basically you start out with access to only bright hold battlements so to open up the next area, you need to complete challenges and earn crystals. It only takes 5 crystals to open the next area. In fact, if you get all 25 crystals from Brighthold Battlements, you can have the 4th area unlocked. It doesn't matter what order you play through, but you need to rescue all 5 seekers, which does require you to play all 25 story levels. Most of the levels are like the first one. You go through the level, fighting, jumping, sprinting, and collecting radiance. Challenges vary between levels you need to collect a certain amount of radiance, defeat a given amount of particular enemies, or find special items. However, elemental challenges are in all of these levels. When exploring, you'll encounter elemental gates, which can only be unlocked by a corresponding Skylander with that element, which the game is nice enough to tell you which Skylanders you need before starting the level. The challenges you are teleported to just require you to reach the end. You don't have to fight all the enemies or anything, you can just pass through, which you are rewarded with a present. There are three presents total, one in each elemental gate and one just chilling in the level. These presents contain either a hat or a character scroll. Hats can be placed on your Skylander in the sanctuary, but they don't give you any stat boosts like they do in the console versions. But character scrolls do give your Skylander a boost. All 37 Skylanders have their own scroll. Yeah, I said 37. The five variants are considered separate Skylanders in this game. As soon as you complete a specific challenge in the level, you earn a crystal. But as soon as you get one, just one crystal it's time to start running hector starts chasing you as soon as you get one crystal which makes completing other challenges a bit more difficult before you had all the time in the world but now you have a time limit to get to the exit if the timer reaches 30 seconds hector will start shooting lasers at you and if the timer reaches zero it's an instant game over clocks can be acquired by balloons or defeating enemies so you'll be given more time to reach the end or finish more challenges but if it seems like you won't make it in time you can finish the level and come back to complete the challenge without worrying about the time limit. Also all the levels where you rescue the seekers require you to find a key which will start the Hector time limit and then you'll need to find where the seekers are kept to free them. You just gotta be careful not to miss them or else you're gonna have to restart the level. Yeah so those are basically what I like to call your platforming levels. So now let's take a look at the other type of levels I refer to as the arena levels. Arena levels have you in one place for three rounds of 
of collecting radiance. You basically need to collect a certain amount of radiance while avoiding obstacles and fighting enemies. In the third round, Hector's time limit will appear so you need to move quickly. You can find two presents in each arena level just floating around. The elemental challenge in each arena level just requires you to have at least one of your Skylanders match the element required so you'll automatically earn the crystal when you complete the level. So there's a total of five crystals you can earn in each level, but you'll only be able to get four in your first playthrough of them. Once you get the first four crystals, you'll be able to get the fifth crystal by replaying the level under a certain time, aka an automatic Hector time limit. It's really not that exciting since you're pretty much always needing to speed run the level at some point. So I've talked about collecting radiance a lot, but what is radiance? Radiance is kind of like gold from the console versions. However, your Skylanders don't keep it. At the end of each level, the total amount of radiance you collect is turned into experience. You can also get radiance from the remaining Hector time and the elemental daily bonus, which of course you can earn by just using the Skylanders of those elements. When gathering radiance, getting 10 will change the color and you'll earn double for a limited time. Radiance is just chilling in the area or you can find it in breakable objects or beating baddies. Of course, you can still earn actual experience by beating up enemies as well, so it's important to fight as many as you can to level up your Skylander. Wait, was that enemy named Tree Rex? Radiance can also be used during levels. If one of your Skylanders is defeated, then you can restore him using 30 Radiance. And for additional help, you can use 10 Radiance to activate a magic item. Magic items from the adventure packs can be equipped by summoning them from Wendell. Each magic item is tied to one of the summoning crystals, so you can have two different magic items or one on both Skylanders. The max level for Skylanders is level 10. Since Skylanders don't use gold to purchase upgrades in this game, you upgrade your Skylander by leveling up. There are three upgrades for each Skylander, which you can look at in the pause menu. You can also see the Skylander's health boost, damage boost, and see what the character scroll boosts for your Skylander. Also, you can view your online universe stat, which is completely useless now since Skylander's universe isn't a thing anymore. There's a few Skylanders I really enjoyed using in this game. Dark Spyro and Spyro aren't just different colors of Spyro. They play completely different from each other, almost as if Dark Spyro was a different Skylander. Spyro uses fireballs as his primary move while Dark Spyro uses Dragon's Fury. Ghost Roaster, a Skylander I can't stand in the console versions since his ectoplasm makes him lose health. Well not in the 3DS version, his sprint makes him immune to all attacks while keeping his health intact. Sunburn was a character I thought to be mediocre in the consoles, but he's not too bad in the 3DS. His teleporting ability is actually useful and his flamethrower is much easier to use. Just when you think Stealth Elf can't get any better, playing as her in the 3DS version just blows your mind. Stealth Elf still hits fast and hard with her daggers and her secondary attack lets her throw daggers, making her a beast of an all-round character. An unfortunate news for my Wrecking Ball fans out there, he still sucks. He's a little better to use, but definitely the worst in my opinion. So once you collected at least 35 crystals to open all areas and save the five seekers, the shattering sigil would be complete and Wendell is able to send you to the dark mirror, the final battle between you and Hector. This fight is a mix of both the arena and platforming levels. First you fight off enemies and shoot rockets at Hector's dumb head to start beating the crap out of him. And once you get Wendell's staff, you raise to the dark mirror so that Wendell and the Seekers can use the staff and the sigil to destroy the mirror and Hector and save his father. And that's pretty much the game. You unlock the Radiance Burst which works as a magic item. It'll cost 10 Radiance and it will destroy all nearby enemies. But of course, that's not the entire game. You still have the four adventure pack levels you can scan in. The Pirate Seas, Empire of Ice, Darklight Crypt, and Dragon's Peak each have one platforming and area level. So there's a total of 10 crystals to earn from each adventure pack, making it a total of 165 crystals to collect. For all my 
100% completionist out there, you'll need to collect all the crystals as well as summon all 37 Skylanders, rescue the 5 Seekers, find all hats, and discover all the scrolls. So if you just want to beat the game, it will take less than 4 hours, but 100% completing it will take about 10 to 15 hours. So what do I think about the 3DS version of Spyro's Adventure? I am incredibly nostalgic for this game, in fact this version is what got me fully into the Skylanders franchise. Yeah, the console versions are a lot more flushed out, but I just like the fact that I can play Skylanders just about anywhere. And the platforming levels are a lot of fun. They're pretty short, which is great for a handheld game. And we can't forget that we are playing this game on a 3DS. I didn't play the entire game in 3D, but when I did use it, I thought the game looked incredible. Things just pop out at you, especially the loading screen. You'll have to see it for yourself to understand what I'm talking about, but the little picture right here just floats off the screen. It's great. You'll get the best experience of the 3D if you use a new 3DS or new 3DS X because they're able to use face tracking and keep the 3D stable. You'll get an okay experience with a regular 3DS and 3DS XL. You'll just need to sit still in the sweet spot to enjoy it and you'll get no experience on a 2DS or a new 2DS XL because those systems don't do 3D. That's kind of their stick. So what are some of the weak points to this game? I think the biggest weak point to this game has to be the Hector timeline. You aren't given a lot of freedom to just take your time with the levels since most of the time you're spreading towards the end of the level. Level. And you can never replay levels without the time limit when you reach Hector's challenge, which sucks, especially if you want to level up your Skylanders. The game doesn't have a difficulty setting, so you won't be able to make the game more challenging, and the inability to reset your Skylanders means you won't be starting from scratch if you want to start another save file. So was this game worth $70 back in 2011? No but I think it's worth checking out now for the prices they go second hand. Just keep in mind you'll need the game, a portal, and at least two Spyro Adventure characters to play. Any 3DS portal will work with Spyro's Adventure, and figures from the other games will work as long as they are introduced in Spyro's Adventure. Well, that's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think about Skylander Spyro's Adventure for the 3DS down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and of course, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. The f***ing volcanic vault doesn't even work in this game. Please don't buy this thing for 70 bucks. Counter strike. Come on, give it your all. You've come a long way. But let me just say, thinking this night is night.